thanks for joining us everyone today we have a special guest that's apparently been unannounced yet i might have spoiled it earlier in my post so here we go i'll just get her on oh hello hello <laughs> Good what morning. a surprise. I'm shocked. <laughs> Rebecca Pizzi, Australia's favourite hype woman. How are we today? I'm incredible. How are you going? Yes, I'm very good. I'm very good. Now, I don't know if I have to, like, announce you or anything, but if people didn't know, <laughs> Rebecca Pizzi has signed again. <laughs> Here I am. Thanks for having me, everyone. Yeah. Huge. <laughs> Big news. Massive news. I'm wrapped to have you on the show, so thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, anytime. Um, again, congratulations. Oh, Ezzy has joined on. Hello, oh, Ezzy. She's been helping me. Oh, has she? She wanted to watch her best friend, did she? Oh, Hopefully yeah. she can throw in some sneaky questions. We'll see. Um, anyway, so, so wrapped to have you back on board. And OG, signing on again with the Flyers. What is it about us that you love so much? Um, I just love, like basically the whole culture that's been created the girls cheryl does an amazing job she doesn't really yell at us which is really nice um and just the support that everybody brings is just like amazing and you don't really feel pressured to kind of be someone who you're not so it's good and you can just do whatever you want like be yourself and yeah yeah that's it it's a very happy environment and you're so right it is very odd to have cheryl the head coach never yell it's um it's weird, isn't it, for, like, not having a coach ever yell at you? And it's like, Especially it's at some of the stuff we do. <laughs> it's kind of refreshing, though, isn't it? It is. But, like, when you stuff up, you know you've stuffed up. So the last thing you need is somebody absolutely yelling at you. So. Yeah. She's very motherly. It's very, like, I'm disappointed in that right now. <laughs> not mad. I'm disappointed. <laughs> Straight to the heart and you know you've done something wrong. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry. I'll, I'll be better. That's it. Okay. So being a youngin, you're considered a sponge, right? Absorbing all the information thrown your way, learning from everybody. Is there someone on our team that you find yourself watching and learning from more than others or someone that you consider a little bit of a mentor for you? Um, well, I probably have like two people. So Jenna's the first one. Obviously, she's done pretty amazing stuff. And she's just such a more than like a great basketball player. She's a great person. And she just does the little stuff. And she's always nice to everybody, no matter who you are. And she tries very hard. And she's very smart. Like basketball IQ is just her thing. Incredible. And the second, yeah, the second one is uh, probably you. Um, oh. Yeah. So, you know, I've played with you for like four years now and I just keep learning new stuff every day and you just always amaze me with how happy and bubbly you are. And it's just like great to learn from you. And I play against you all the time. So it's really great fun. And we just have good banter. Oh, we yeah. do have good banter. Thank you, Pizzy. I'm very honoured. Um, I feel like we learn off each other. So I'm going to throw that back at you. And that's the nice thing anyone's ever said to me on this show because normally I get rip, rip, ripped into about how much of a terror I am. So... <laughs> That's coming later. <laughs> yeah. Well, my next question is, who do you trash talk most in trainings? And I think I already oh, know who it's you. <laughs> Definitely you. Yeah. Easily. You wouldn't go left. <laughs> I was going to say, I threw this question in so we could talk about it. Uh, during trainings, like you said, you and I are on each other a lot. And you, sweet and innocent, actually trash talk a lot in trainings. And especially me. You know I have trouble with my left hand and you always, always go, just, just say what you said just then. You wouldn't go left. <laughs> You're not going to go left. You suck. <laughs> yeah. Not that you suck, but, <laughs> but you wouldn't go left. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. okay. Just wait until this season. <laughs> you wouldn't dribble it? Well, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what are you wanting to work on and improve on most this season? And don't give us that stock standard people pleasing answer like individually what are you wanting to work on um well probably being like more aggressive and confident in myself and knowing that like I can actually do some stuff and like when I shoot it don't shoot it to shoot it shoot it because I know I'm gonna make it um yeah and just stuff like that and defense is always very challenging and you can always be better at defense so that'd be probably the main two things I want to work on 
Yeah, good girl. I like hearing that whole thing about confidence because people wouldn't know that you're probably one of our best three-point shooters on the team. <laughs> and I didn't even think you know that you're the best three-point shooter on our team. <laughs> but no. you are, so it would be nice. Like, I feel like every time I defend you, you're always hitting them against me. That's fine. It's just you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if I can give you confidence, I've done my job. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, putting you on the spot here. Who out of all the staff members on the Flyers team could you not live without? Oh, I really have to say Jenny James because, like, her cooking is just incredible and she just looks after everyone. And, like, I just couldn't live without her, you know. She's just like a mother figure. Yeah, that's a great and answer. You need her. Or, like, yeah, I, all of them really, but, yeah, Jenny is just just next level. Like she's the best team manager you'll ever have. So that's yeah. Big time there. And I feel like, look, as much as you need physio and massage, I feel like if we ask JJ to give us a, massage, do it. <laughs> <laughs> she would, and she'd be like, here's some cake to go with it. <laughs> yes. Um, big shout out to JJ. We give her a shout out every week. She did make Portuguese tarts yesterday at training. My mum was just so angry that I couldn't come and visit her and give her some. I've still got one on my bench, but oof. Yeah, Madeline looked at your Instagram story and was like, why didn't you bring me tarts home for me? Sorry. That's Madeline. true. Why didn't yeah. you? I didn't think about it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, family. They're probably over there watching this. So it's a su Sunday morning housework day. So everyone's doing the cleaning. Yeah. <laughs> That's where they need the Portuguese tarts. Even my dad just commented on it saying, you've got to have JJ. Portuguese That's tarts JJ's all the way. <laughs> okay, Pizzy, what shoes are we rocking with this year? Oh, here's something I prepared earlier. These ones. Yeah. Um, I also have an extra pair just in case these get broken. So I do have three pairs of these in total. Um, they're, as you can see, they're really nice south side colour. Um, a bit of black because I do like black shoes because they don't get dirty. And um, they're the first ever pair of Nikes that I've ever worn. And I love them. I'm probably not going to go back to ASICs. Sorry, ASICs, but do love these. Very south side flies appropriate. I feel like all the girls are kind of rocking that as well. Yeah. And they're really, <laughs> really coming into fashion. Like all the shoes, all the shoe brands are actually getting the teal colors. So yes. very pleased. Do you want to know a story? Not to talk about myself, but when I was playing with Bendigo Spirit, Christy Harawa, who was just like the legend of the game, mm -hmm. said to me, and my, my language, it's not bad, but she goes, Sarah, you need to have a bit more bitch about you. <laughs> and the I've next been told week, that too. Well, the next week I thought, you're right. So I went out and I bought a pair of black shoes <laughs> because I just feel like black shoes are just, I'm a bitch. <laughs> I know. They actually make me look tanned as well. So like, look good, feel good, play good. It's okay. <laughs> Did you know that white shoes make you look um, more athletic? Yes, actually, I did. That's why I just never look athletic. It's all with the shoes. It's nothing to do with me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. If we're going into a hub this year, what are the essentials that need to be in your suitcase? Um, my anatomy textbook. I actually think I'll have to bring it. <laughs> for uni. A couple of kilos. <laughs> yes. Um, my laptop, along with the Netflix that it provides. And I do like plants, so I don't think I can bring a plant, but I don't know. And essentials. Oh, my drink bottle. I lost Absolutely. it for a bit. Not just because it's camouflage. I literally lost it for like two months. Um, when is... <laughs> yeah, so, and then I found it. <laughs> Not because it's camouflage. Oh, my gosh. No, that's yeah. incredible. Is that Ian's dad joke coming out on you? <laughs> yeah, it is. Ian told me a dad joke, so I have to say it. <laughs> yeah, good. You've prepared. Um, I feel like board games are a must as well. I think we've got to yes. mm, sneak in a few board games and snacks. Oh, yeah. Also snacks. Forgot about those. Uh, JJ will provide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but actually, I also have – so I have a dot-to-dot -dot colouring book, which is – quite good this is one of them I've done Lovely. Um, I have like a thousand dots which just takes a long time or I just have some more uh, smaller coloring books and I also bought some crayons this uh 
this lockdown. Two dollars forty eight from Office Works, so they're 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 coming with me. Lovely. Well, hotel quarantine. You're going to need to get artsy and crafty. Kills time. Mm, true. <laughs> okay, so tell us about your journey so far in basketball. How, when, and where you started to now in a WNBL team. Okay, so. I started playing when I was like eight at Ball and Blazers, uh, which is my local team. Um, I started playing because my brother played and I didn't want to be left out. Um, and sorry, what am I? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. And Stop then reading the comments. Yeah, I'm really bad at that. Jackson. Um, yeah. So I started playing when I was eight at Ball and Blazers and then I moved to Bulleen um, because, well, they were like probably the best club at the time for me. And I kind of met everyone, everyone there and loved it and just kind of played domestic, played rep from under 12s through till under top age 18s. I played rep there. So loved that. I was in, I was like tall and not very good in the under 12s. And they were like, she's tall. So <laughs> Get her on board. So Yeah, I made the seconds team and like, I don't think we won. I think we won like one game in VC and it was just not a great season. But after that, like it, it really, it looked up. So I made the 12 ones, 14 threes um, and then 14 ones. And we, we didn't make nationals that year, which was kind of depressing, but well, there was one game where we had to, you'll love this, where we had to qualify for nationals and it was against Hawthorne Magic um, on a Friday afternoon. That Friday at school, I fell down the stairs and hurt my knee and I couldn't play. <laughs> oh, lost. no. Oh, and no. So that, yeah, that still gets held over my head to this day. Um, thanks, Matt Paps. Yeah, so we won the Classic, didn't get to go to Nationals. Um, I don't remember who won BC, but yeah, that was great. And then six, I made 16 twos, um, 16 ones, which we went undefeated every game of the season, which was really great. Um, that's kind of where I kind of was like oh I love winning so yeah um and then and then from there I didn't make the under 16 state team so that was a bit heartbreaking um but that's okay I bounced back so I made emergency that year the year before I didn't try out because probably I was just nervous and I was going to Bali um so I was like <laughs> I, I'm not gonna make it I'm going to Bali <laughs> so I didn't I didn't actually really try it. I kind of dropped out. Priorities. So that was Priorities. Really, really bad of me now that I look at it, but um, that's okay. And then, yeah, 16, top age 16s didn't make it. Bottom age 18s, I made it. And I was still playing a bullying, so that was really great. We That was with Paul Flynn, um, such a great coach. He, I was like, from going from not making it top age 16s to making it bottom age 18s was like, wow, good job. So, yeah, that yeah. was probably a very proud moment for me. And then... After that, under 15s, no, under 16s for, with the Australian team, they like called me up and then we went to New Zealand, uh, which was cool because like I'm one thirty second Maori, so I'm like practically New Zealandish. So yeah, um, so we went and played in New Zealand and like my nana and pa and like aunties and stuff came and watched. So that was pretty cool. Um, and then so we won that and we qualified for Spain, oh, which is under 17 World Championships. And then I got asked to go to the AAS. So that was Start of 2016, originally I wasn't going to go. And then I had a massive cry to my coach and I was like, no, I want to go. So then I went, which I'm really glad that I did. So I did year 12 up there at Radford, did woodwork, uh, made some cool things, you know, just like the tradie girl I am. Yeah. Um, and then, so from there, we had, we went to China as a pre-Worlds tour, which was the weirdest two weeks of my life. I took like a kilo of oats and I ate them all um <laughs> yeah. it was just because well like one time it was dinner so we there was exactly the same stuff for breakfast dinner and lunch which was so weird but then one time in China for dinner there was like it looks like popcorn chicken so I was like great popcorn chicken I cannot wait and then it turns out it was like duck feet and I was like oh my god I just ate duck feet and I went back for seconds because I was so good so <laughs> That wasn't great. Um, but yeah, after that, we came home. I had to do exams um, after like, I don't know what I'd learned or anything because I'd just been in China for two weeks. Um, <laughs> yeah. And then we went to like, I don't know what the country is, but it's Prague or Czech Republic. But, but yeah, don't know which one of countries. But we went there for like another pre-worlds thing. And then we went to Spain, um, Zaragoza, which is where our actual worlds was. And then we were there and I, so... I had a shoulder surgery, if nobody knows, um, yeah. and it popped out in, like, our last game 
in Prague in Czech Republic and I was like I'm not going home I've already had two weeks in China I like I've endured this I need to go so then I well we obviously still played I had to strap my shoulder every single game and it was like red raw and it just wasn't great but um yeah and then well we ended up winning so it kind of made everything worth it but I also had a stress fracture in my shin at the time (laughs) so like it was just just not a great couple weeks for my body but we made it and we won which is great how um, many times have you popped your shoulder out, by the way? Oh, probably like 10. <laughs> oh, you just have the flimsiest. Is it your right or your left? My left. So it's oh. not my shooting arm. Yeah. Oh. So, but it actually feels really good now, like super strong. Good. So, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, so that was under 17. Then we came home, finished year 12 at the AS, And then I stayed on for another half a year after that. Um, didn't do uni, took like a gap year, which was really great. Um, did some AIS tours, which were fun and just kind of, oh yeah, that's what, that's what I was there for. Um, we were under 19s with that year. So I kind of was coming back from my shoulder, doing lots of gym sessions with Jan Leg, shout out to Jan Leg, and some bike sessions, which they were really hard. Um, and then anyway, I made the under 19s team, which was massive. I really didn't think I was going to. Um, and then, so that was great. And then we went to, where did we go? We went to France for pre-worlds and then we went to Italy for actual worlds. So that was a really good experience. And we didn't really win. We came like six or something, but we came, do you know, um, Maria, the, oh, I can't remember the name. She's from Russia. She's absolutely like huge. And like, there was just all these amazing oh, Russian she's players. She's the center, that, right? Yeah. Who the plays center in, for like, under 19s. And then she yeah. made like the main team for Russia. She's a gun, right? Yeah, yeah. I know who's she's like about. huge. Yeah, so we yeah. had to play against her, and I was literally like, "Oh my god!" But um, it was really cool to come up against them, and we had like a shot on the buzzer to win, but we unfortunately missed it. But that's okay. Um, so that was to go through to like the quarter or semifinals or something. So we didn't make those, which is unfortunate. But Russia went on to win it all, so it's okay. Um, but Vadiva, yeah, thank you, comment, uh, Maria Vadiva, yeah. So that was really like eye-opening to kind of see that well she's very big and very good and like you kind of need to work hard so anyway that was under 19 um and then I left the AIS and signed with Dan Inong and that was my first professional kind of thing which was very cool I was like well and I rocked up to training and I was just shocked at the people who I was around I was like you know you obviously it was like <laughs> Tessa Levy, Carly, others Kayla <laughs> Peterson. Back then. Yeah. No. <laughs> Kayla <laughs> Peterson. Yeah. So um that was really cool. Stephanie Stephanie so Blitzars. Oh yeah. She's watching right course. now. She was there. Oh. Shout out to Steph Hi Arlo. Yeah. Um so that was yeah, that was like a very good eye opening experience. I remember my first training. I really hadn't done that much in like a month. And I like almost fainted. <laughs> <laughs> it was like our first pre-season training and I was like, I'm literally about to faint. So I had to like pull out of the um, training. So yeah, that was quite scary, but it's okay. <laughs> and then from there, we, we, I don't think we won that season, but that's okay. We tried really hard, um, but I learned heaps in that season. Then I went on to play for Danny Long um, in the, in the, I think it was still Siebel then. And then yeah. Danny, Danny Nong again. And then I played for Nana Wadding last year. And then Southside Flyers last year. And then season got cancelled this year, but I was going to play with Eltham. And that is exactly where we are And today. here we are. Very, a... very descriptive, Piz. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Just... Yeah, sorry, sorry to everyone who wants to listen to that. <laughs> no. That's good. That's good. It gives you an insight. And I think, like, people growing up, too, who maybe you're at that, like, 15, 16-year-old kind of mark, too, it'd, it'd be good for them to, I guess, kind of hear your journey and how you have come about to being a part of the WNBL team. How do you find... Um, How did you find the Australian national stuff at such a young age? Because obviously a lot of us have done that. You know, did you do 17s as well or just 19s? 17s and 19s, yeah. Yeah. How did you find that, like, just going into that environment straight away being so young? Um, Well, so when we did 17s, I was at the AIS already and it was literally most of our team made the squad. So we kind of already lived with each other for, like, six months, but... It was cool to kind of work from the day we met each other in like January up until um, when 17s was and kind of like work together. And we all had the common goal of like winning. So it was cool to come together. Um, It was probably, or I always love like road trips, state teams, like nationals and all that. I love being around everyone all the time. So I, I personally, I loved it. It was very, a, a lot of training. 
Um, like you train the morning of and then you play. So like you kind of have to recover really well and it kind of shows you how important fueling and recovery and the physios are. Um, so I, yeah, I really enjoyed it, but it just like, I've, I had two very different experiences and um, yeah, it kind of makes you appreciate very good. Like it makes you appreciate how good the good times are. Yeah, big time. Bad one. Yeah, yeah. yeah so. And it is um, massive learning experiences because like you said, you learn, you're kind of like thrown in the deep end and you have to learn so much and be so independent quickly. And it's like, like you said, nutrition, physio, you never really understood that until you hit the national side and, yeah. you know, have to actually look after your body and yourself. And normally that's your parents' job. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Usually Carol does that. She does my washing and everything. Thanks, mum. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So who was your idol growing up? Does it necessarily have to be basketball? It could be other sports or it could be outside of sport. So I, whenever, okay, I've been asked this question before. I don't really have one specific idol. I kind of have a few different people that I look up to and I like to take the good parts from them. Not that they're bad parts, but um, I like to take the good parts, which I can kind of get put into myself, if that makes sense. So like, obviously my mum and my dad have always been my idols since I've been growing up. Like dad plays, still plays basketball. So I go and watch him on a Thursday night. He's, he's <laughs> his local team and then they have beers in the in the car park after which is which is how is funny. he is he a good he's player? really good um oh, you're looking he's, around he's, he's very much like me um he yeah he's all right he can't really shoot it from outside but um he's very good inside the key sorry <laughs> um Who but we, we do one-on-one on one? uh me yeah me no nah, um it's quite quite a close competition nick actually beats me my brother so but he's crazy. He's he's going to be on the boys' team, so that's okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, so oh, my idol, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, so obviously mum and dad <laughs> um, and just some, like, just honestly, it's random people that I meet along the way that kind of make the most impact in me. Like Kayla Peterson, um, she's back in America now. She's having a baby, but she was like – she kind of came to the end of her career as mine kind of started. So I took lots off her um, and just, yeah, like literally everyone I meet, I, Ian Pizzi commented Thursday night at Boleyn is tough. Thank you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that would have taken minutes to write. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. Hi, Ian. Um, I feel like yeah. Ian should join the official men's Southside Flyers training squad. <laughs> All right, he can match up against Liz. Yeah, we'll get my dad on yeah. board too. He just had a knee yeah. replacement and he's really, really good at trash talk and air balls. So we'll get oh. him on board too. <laughs> common themes, common themes, all coming together. Oh, yeah, but um, those are about, like I, everyone I meet, I try and kind of make my idol and take something away from them. Yeah, that's really good. That's a really good way to go about it too because you're right. It's not like you're taking, you see people that show bad things about them, but you're right, like little aspects of everyone's game. Um, yeah, yeah, that's really good, Piz. Yeah. Um, ultimate goal in basketball? Well, other than to have fun, um, which is always my main goal. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't play. Um, I like I, I my ultimate goal. Um, obviously, I want to win a WNBL championship. I want to go play overseas um, and just kind of experience that. And like. Australian teams, Olympics, everyone kind of aims for that. But if it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. Like you, there's just so many unknowns. And at the end of the day, I, my goal is to have fun and Good just girl. see where it takes me. So yeah. And have confidence and then you'll get there yes. because that's all that's letting exactly. you down right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so yeah. right now you're studying full-time or part-time physio? Full? part-time i can only part-time do one subject physio. now yeah yeah okay well where are you up to right now how long do you have left um so to go on your course? yes so after this subject is done i'll have finished second year so i've done two full years which is like 20 20 ish subjects or something like that and then i have another two years to go that would be full-time 
but um so next year I'm planning on going full-time for the first semester which is going to be a bit crazy but that's okay um so next year we learn like neuro like neuro cardio respiratory all this random stuff which is actually very important not random um and then after that we have placements so placements are like for the second for like the second half of third year and then all of fourth year so those are two you have two two two-week placements at hospitals um within the different kind of areas and that's that'd be like basically working but as placement and that'd be really cool but um I'm gonna have to kind of see what I'm doing with basketball at the time to see if I can be doing the placements because basketball is my first priority while I can kind of play and while I'm young enough yeah yeah it is a lot and that leads me to my next question how do you find managing both basketball and uni and do you have any advice? Well, I, I like, I love doing something other than basketball because it kind of takes your mind off it. Like if all you do is basketball and think basketball, breathe basketball, you're going to get sick of it and you're going to kind of burn out really quickly. So having something else is really important, whether it's like study or a hobby or just something else that you like. So I, I love physio and anatomy, which is the subject I'm doing at the moment. Here's my wall. Um, it's, <laughs> It has all of my notes on it. So it's my pride and joy. Um, so that's, well, that's all the um, notes from the upper, from like the upper limb, the arm. So I, I enjoy because I like learning different stuff and I like relating it back to basketball, which is probably or like relating back to myself, not basketball, because it's all about the human body. And sometimes I look back at, because we learned about the shoulder. When I had shoulder surgery, I had no clue about it. And everyone's like, what did you do? And I'm like, I had shoulder surgery they're like but what did you do and I was like I don't know so I learned all about the shoulder and now I'm like oh it actually makes so much sense like what actually happened and the fact that um like if my knee sore it's not actually my knee it's coming from like my quads and all this other stuff so it's good to kind of relate it back to what you what you can do and I like doing physio because I like helping people so that's that kind of goal at the end of the day yeah and I think it's good that because we've been through the institute of sport and like you said national teams you're right you kind of learn you're in like the right university course right now for what you're doing with basketball too because you learn so much in basketball that it's kind of like easier I would say well not easy because I've seen you be a shambles before but (laughs) yeah but um there's like some people don't even know what like a squat is crazy and I'm like what and then there's some um like exercises that you have to kind of think of and everyone's like oh my gosh I had no idea that they even exist and then it's like mm. an arabesque or something and it's like well maybe <laughs> gotcha maybe yeah maybe you should know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's funny all right yeah. isolation any skills that you've picked up or anything new that you've learned about yourself um I bought a skateboard <laughs> um <laughs> yeah so I've tried to learn to ride that sometimes which is pretty cool um what else I bought a paint by numbers as well let me show you it's really <laughs> you just cool got everything there <laughs> <laughs> here's what I prepared earlier <laughs> no nah, because I'm at my desk so this is it it's um as you can see I haven't got very far but this t- this has taken me about seven hours to do because the um the things where you paint are just so tiny and just take forever so I like doing that but um obviously I'm not going very far um but that's okay what else do I like to do I have learned Netflix is great I oh I also love cooking so I've been cooking a lot and baking a lot oh what have you been baking um carrot cake I love that muffins my family like muffins they like anything chocolate um so yeah what else? Oh, I have to cook dinner on Monday nights as well. So that's another thing that I've been doing. Yeah. But like everyone has. So Monday night is my night. Wednesday night is Madeline's night. And first, oh, Friday night is Nick's night. But Madeline doesn't have to do it because she works full time now. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. another story. <laughs> that's, that's for another time. Geez, oh. your parents have planned that well, haven't they? They have. Yeah. And are we okay. We've also been doing this thing called COVID bingo. So it's a group chat, which Ian runs um, with, it's a group chat which Ian runs and so basically every day so there's my family in it and then like um some of Madeline's friends and some of my friends so you enter a number and the next day the person who's closest to the number with like the amount of cases that like 
if there's like 73 cases and somebody guesses 74, they win it for the, um, for the day. So there's a whole Excel spreadsheet to this. Um, yeah, so it's quite, quite entertaining. There's an Excel spreadsheet, which Madeline looks after. Anne and I are both winning on um, 12 wins. Mum isn't doing very well. I think she has like four wins. So it's quite funny. Yeah. That's so dad, awesome. Yeah. So how dad long writes up an for? evening report. Um, since like... I'd say it's quite a while, probably yeah. since the, the start of the second lockdown, a couple of months. Yeah. <laughs> Every many, night you enter a number. How many of you guessed for today? <laughs> um, I think I, I guessed like 39 for today or something like that. <laughs> it, was, it was 40 something, but I was, yeah, I was really good when it was like the 700s. So don't, I would say take me back, but please don't. <laughs> I do not want to go back to 700s. So yeah. yeah. Good anyway. game. That's very creative. Very, That's very creative. Good. Well done, Ian. Thank you. Big class yeah. for you. <laughs> all right and lastly before we get into the very uh personal quick fire questions netflix movies what are you watching right now um at the moment i'm watching gossip <laughs> solid um which is great yeah mm. and i watched vampire diaries before yeah. this um yeah i'm really getting to the teen the teen um <laughs> things so they're great um gray's anatomy is another good one has like 25 seasons so like you'll be set for at least a year maybe less if you binge them but um no re just really enjoying those yeah all the footy's back on at the moment so that's good yeah go Geelong we are Geelong yeah great <laughs> okay quick fire questions so like I said okay. before quick questions quick answers back are you ready I'm ready I've changed them up a little bit this time too so oh, uh, -oh. uh any other sports growing up netball <laughs> <laughs> favorite NBA team? Uh, see, this question, I don't really have a favorite NBA team. I have favorite players, so I like Luka Doncic. Oh, so good, right? Mm. Uh, favorite AFL team? Geelong. <laughs> if you could be a pro in any other sport, you would choose what? I'm thinking volleyball. Oh, okay. Which is can a random earn, one. And you can earn some money over in Europe with volleyball. Yeah, and like it's it's just kind of a cool sport that I never got to play growing up, but always wanted to. I feel like the way your shoulders are built and the fact that they dislocate and pop out all the time, Ooh. volleyball is probably not the greatest sport for it. Might but... have to pick another one. Okay, <laughs> we'll go with netball. <laughs> yeah. I actually Describe... do like netball. Oh, okay. Describe Sorry. yourself in three words. Um, positive, bubbly, and creative. Lovely. Cats or dogs? Um, dogs, but I have a cat, so don't tell him. <laughs> I won't tell him. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Favourite animal besides a stock standard pet? Um, giraffe or turtle. Oh, two of my favourites right there. Absolutely. I can't split them. Yeah, they're just great. Because we relate to giraffes, uncoordinated, yeah. a bit lanky, <laughs> fall on the ground exactly. a lot. And turtles are cute. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's the opposite. Of, like... <laughs> What subjects were you good at at school? Maths, um, PE, biology, accounting. Because, yeah. Just, you're one of those people, maths and accounting. <laughs> My whole family's accountants, so, like, it's, it's, a, it's a birthright. <laughs> Favourite music? Um, love throwbacks. Um, anything that I can sing along to. Yeah. Favourite food? Chocolate. It's got to be chocolate. Okay, hot chips or chocolate? <laughs> chocolate. It's got to be chocolate. <laughs> Coffee or tea? Coffee. Best cafe in Melbourne? Uh, nuts about coffee in Blackburn. It's really oh. good. And you get like a free little biscuit with it. It's so good. Anyway. What kind of biscuit? Um, it's just like a, like a nuts and seeds biscuit. It's really good. <laughs> <Nuts and seeds. laughs> Favourite country visited? Um, do you remember how I said P Prague or Czech Republic? I don't really know like which one's the country. So that country. <laughs> That's Czech. <laughs> Czech Republic. Yeah, that country. Your perfect holiday would look like. Um, okay. So I like to do like one day relaxing and then maybe one day exploring. Um, so like one day relaxing by the beach, by the pool, just chilling. And then one day exploring, like taking a car and going up to see random stuff. So that's probably it. And then going out for dinner and just watching the sunset. Mm, sounds so good right now too, doesn't it? Take me back. <laughs> yeah. Summer, autumn, winter or spring? Summer, easily. 
Smoothie or juice order? Oh, smoothie. I love just pl- classic banana smoothie. So that's a pretty good one. Yeah, banana smoothie. Or tropical juice. Love that. Hmm. Game day hmm. rituals. <sighs> Wake up, go for a walk, have a coffee, have a nap, have another coffee, rock up to the game. Solid. Just simple. <laughs> simple. <laughs> classic. If you could date a celeb, who would you date? Um, many AFL players or like Nat Fife is great. Um, so it's like Patrick Cripps from Tarleton. Um, they're great. Um, other than that, Damon Salvatore from Vampire Diaries. Um, his name's also like Ian Summer Holder or something. He's like 47, but he's great. <laughs> Date your dad's name. <laughs> <laughs> Best pump up song. Oh, see, I don't really have one pump up song, but I love all the ones which I can like rap to. They're great. So yeah, anything. Song. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And awesome. Rebecca Pizzi, I've been waiting for this moment for so long. Can you please provide us with a dad's joke? Okay. And you got so, this one from Ian, right? Yeah. This this one's especially from Ian. I have two. So the first one is, what word is spelt wrong in the dictionary? <laughs> wrong? Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. And my other one is, um, um, what does Snoop Dogg use his umbrella for? What? For drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> and they're my two. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> thank you, thank you. This is the one I told Gilly yesterday and she wouldn't tell you. <laughs> oh, for Drizzle is a good one. I'm really wrapped with that. The thank wrong you. ones, is that your dad's joke? <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's classic. All right, I'm just going to scroll up and see if we've got any questions. All right. Thanks see what we've got. Us. Yeah, you've got a lot of hellos, which is good. Hi, guys. Got a lot of likes, yeah. <laughs> Just people responding. When is Pizzi going to get in the starting five? <laughs> this is Jackson. So. <laughs> Jackson Elliott. Oh, he's great. Oh. He's thrown in a few, actually. Yeah, he did. Just be confident here. Just give us, like, this year. <laughs> no comment. You can take Liz's spot. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> she took my number. <laughs> yeah, did she? Oh, flat. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. it's okay. What do you? What number are you rocking with this year? Number nine. That's good. Yeah, Patrick Cripps's number. So close to number eight. <laughs> same thing. <Yeah. laughs> Toughest opponent. Oh. Um, I'm probably gonna say you. Oh. And, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Well, like because as much as like if we train together. But, like, there's always something new. Like, there's always, like, something where I'm like, oh, I did not expect that. So, like, yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. That's a training. What about... Um, In a game. Who you play? Yeah. Um, Ezzy's very tough. Mm. She's still watching. Yeah. Ezzy, just stop being so good. Um, <laughs> She's okay. only going to get better, too. <laughs> I know. But, um, yeah, Ezzy's very tough. And she's just so athletic. But, yeah. But she's a really good person, so it's okay. I know, right? Just makes it all yeah. okay. Yeah. Arlo says hello, so there you go. Hi, Arlo. <laughs> um, do they have mental health care and resources for young Aussie athletes? Yes, they definitely do. When I was at the AAS, there was always, like, a psychologist available if you needed it. Um, always, like, meetings with nutritionists, everything else, um, everything to keep you well physically but also mentally there was heaps of different workshops that you can kind of do and um like there's always somebody who you can reach out to even like even the coaches and everything they always say like we're here for you and everything like that so you kind of don't well I feel like you have a relationship a very good relationship with most of the coaches you have so you can kind of feel comfortable well I've always felt comfortable if I could go up to them and talk to them about it yeah that's cool um Jenna asked does your family like your dinners (laughs) Jenna, this is a triggering topic. No, they don't. <laughs> they, Why they do they don't. not like your dinners? Well, because they have like green food, like spinach or something in it. Because that, well, Nick, okay, this is Nick's food is Parma pizza, snags, or a burger. That's what he cooks on a four week rotation. So that's what he likes. 
I like to try try new things like curries and everything, but they don't like it. So, and they think okay. everything's spicy anyway. <laughs> Damn. So they just yeah. do not look forward to Monday night dinners. <laughs> no. Nick's like, I can't wait for Corona to be over so I can go away on Mondays. Anyway. <laughs> what a brother. <laughs> I know. I love the support. He's probably asleep um... right now. <laughs> Okay, trading matchups. Will you be matching up on Liz? And if so, how excited are you to learn from her? Oh, I think I'll be matching up on Liz at training a bit, which is um, nerve-wracking but exciting. And I think there's just so much to learn from her because obviously she's just gone and done so many different things. She's a great outside shooter as well as inside. She's also very big. But I'm excited to kind of learn different ways that you can beat her because... I mean, there's. I feel like everyone always has a little bit of a weakness, so you can try yeah. and exploit that weakness. Um, just learn different things. Obviously, she's been everywhere, and um, I mean, I don't really know what I'll learn yet, but I'll tell you at the end of the season. Yeah, no, that's a good way. To, honestly, and that's what makes you smarter too. If you're like trying to figure out that from the get go, so that's a good exactly. answer. How do you feel about matching up on friends? Um, oh, <laughs> I mean, it's fine especially at training because you can kind of have like the banter and everything and and if something goes wrong it's just like well you can laugh it off but um yeah matching up on friends is it's fine like once you cross the line you're still friends but you just, <laughs> you're just not that nice to them you just hate each other <laughs> exactly <laughs> and like everyone plays basketball so like everybody knows how it is so yeah that's it exactly fine. right yeah. um all right. I think I'm going to – you're getting a lot of love, Rebecca Pizzi. This is unreal. So thank you, well everyone. done to you. You've been great. Thank you for coming on today. Much Thanks appreciated. Yeah. Yep. You're welcome. Um, we are running out of guests at the moment because our team just hasn't <laughs> announced anyone. So. This is my announcement. Yeah. Amy messaged me today and said that um, she's happy to interview me next week. So we'll just see oh, how that goes. Idea. We'll just see how they go. But Pizzy, you've been wonderful. Everyone's loved hearing from you. Thank you so much. Very insightful. And um, yeah, see you at training. <laughs> Thank you. Can't wait. Um, yeah, just had a, had a ball. Thanks. See you on Tuesday. <laughs> Thanks for joining in, everyone. See you next week. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>